So our journey started in 2017 as Forest Africa. We looked at our demographics in Zambia, for example. More than 50% of our people live in rural communities and they are predominantly peasant farmers. And we all know that a mono-economy of rent-fed peasant farming is under serious threat lately due to climate change. You see that we've got uh, droughts and flooding resulting in crop failure. And so they tend, in that desperation, uh, in order for them to earn a living, they start cutting down trees in mass to make charcoal for them to, you know, survive. But then there's something very interesting. You find that amidst all this crop failure, we've got wild fruits that are always available. Logic tells me really that um, um, uh, even wild fruits should ideally fail. But you read in newspapers that people either in southern province of Zambia are surviving on wild fruits on account of crop failure. So really the question is, why have crops failed and our wild fruits are available? Why? Because these are crops and plants that belong to the African terrain. They are resilient, they've survived. You know, they're able to do well, even on account of very little rainfall. Unlike cash crops such as maize, you do not need pesticides, you do not need to buy any seed. But for wild fruits, how well, they're just growing naturally. Nobody has touched them. If really we're going to talk about organic, that's what really organic means. Nobody has sprayed them anything. They're just available out there for the rural communities to get them. So we saw an opportunity as Forest Africa to monetize these wild fruits, uh, thereby creating some kind of resilience, adaptive capacity in these rural communities. So we integrate the rural communities into the value chain, then they aggregate these fruits for us, we bring them to our factory, and then we process them into various uh, uh, food products, and then we feed them into the retail market. As Forest Africa, we are currently working with uh, 200 households. A typical household has got about five people, and each one of those in that season would come several times when the fruits are in season, you know, supplying us. So essentially, we are impacting around a thousand people, uh, you know, in terms of uh, people that are aggregating and supplying us these wild fruits. I think what is very exciting for us is that it has now created some kind of alternative livelihood for the rural communities. Because before, they would only eat them on the street or sell little small, small quantities here and there on the market. But now we've commercialized the wild fruit, which we believe has got potential to deflect these rural communities into very bad vices of cutting down these trees. We've given them some kind of alternative, uh, you, know, to, to, you know, to the bad vices of deforestation. So we are quite excited with that kind of business model.